بسم الله والصلاة والسلام على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم أما بعد حبيت في الله I just took a minute and I was just looking around this mountain here and at the top of this mountain where we'll sit and have some sittings is a lake so we're hiking to a lake it's about an hour up and it'll be an hour back down and it seems as if it's like a movie and I turned on the camera really because I wanted to share this it's so beautiful to breathe this air to smell the trees and the various flowers and listen to the birds and I'm literally there is a couple of cars down there so there's some other people up here but there's almost no one I haven't seen a single person and it's about an hour or two now after Fajr hour and a half and I, I, I was just reflecting on how important this it is to be in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's creation as I've mentioned countless times to look at his to see the signs but how invigorating it is. In fact, unfortunately, sometimes I miss that even when I go out because I'm so eager to, to put it on film. You know, we live in a different time. But it is out of a love to share it. It is out of a love to share. But sometimes we miss things that are right in front of us for that fact, for that reason. And so, I was just reflecting on how important it is to grow in your Islam. And what I mean by that, Ahabat Tafillah, is we, as we age, we hopefully mature. Because some people, they don't really mature. You see that they're almost the same state they were 5, 10, 15, 20, 30 years. You know, this is, this is a reality. Some people... It's almost like they do not grow. They don't mature. They don't mature in their Islam. They don't mature in their understanding as a Muslim. Because your value of Islam will grow as you grow in knowledge and as you grow in age. That hopefully you realize the importance of your Islam. That it, it, it takes on a different value. And what I mean by that, and that maturity, is that you learn to appreciate things through experience. And you learn to appreciate things through ilm. Lana ilm nur. And that's because knowledge is light. It's, it's, it's guidance. You know, what does light do for you? Light gives you the ability to see. Light gives you the ability to distinguish between threats and harms and those things which are mufid, which are beneficial. All that is with hidayah, it's with light. And when you have darkness, you're unable to distinguish what is harmful From that which is good. And I think that's clear common sense. But imagine if you were in this same spot. And this is only about 20 minutes up this mountain. And you stopped in the middle of these woods. After Maghrib. Short maybe 30 minutes to an hour after Maghrib. <laughs> you would find you would have a completely different experience. And fear would set in. Because of the unknown. And you would and and those creatures and beasts of the night that come out, you would be more cognizant of them and more fearful because you can't see. You wouldn't have guidance, you wouldn't have light. So likewise with Elm, which is that 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 source of Hidayah, 
with Islamic knowledge, sound Islamic knowledge, you have the guidance that can help you to be on the Suratullahi al mustaqim It it is the 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 way to make you on the straight path, to keep you guided aright. That that's al al manafia, beneficial knowledge, and it protects you from the shayateen from amongst mankind and jinn and their hidden ways because they hide in the darkness ahl bid'a hides in the darkness ahl kufr wa shirk they thrive and hide in the darkness in misguidance the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said kullu bid'a kullu bid'atin dalala wa kullu dalalatin fin nar he said all bid'a all religious innovation is misguidance and all misguidance is in the fire think about that so when you are in darkness you are what you're without guidance because you're without light so you don't know in a physical sense you don't know which way to go if I stopped here and I slept here for another however many hours till Maghrib because we're after Fajr probably 13 hours 14 hours from now perhaps more What I would, how I would feel is quite different than now. Now I can sit, I'm comfortable, it's beautiful. I enjoy the sounds of the river. We're approaching the river, which uh, I believe comes from the lake that we're gonna get to. You know, the beauty of these rocks. But if I were to sit here on these rocks, I will be waiting for a time of misguidance because I wouldn't even be able to see and detect my way out of here very easily. I could easily walk off the side of the road, tumble into the forest. I could easily, it's only one path, but you could at some point really get lost in the pitch black. And so that shows us of Hidayah. And Hidayah as well, Ahabatifillah, guidance, is of uh, two types, if you will. Hidayah to Tawfiq or Hidayah to Irshad. Hidayah to Tawfiq or Hidayah. Hidayat to Irshad. Hidayat to Tawfiq Ahabatifillah means Hidayat to Tawfiq is the guidance of, you could say, the accepted guidance. Meaning, Hidayat to Tawfiq that comes from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone. So, for example, if someone embraces Islam and they go to seek knowledge and they be, they're on good, that is Hidayat to Tawfiq from Allah. No one could force them, could determine their Islam. That goal was only reached and that natija, if you will, that result was only attained because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ordained it. He decreed it, subhanahu wa ta'ala. He gave them Tawfiq. He gave them Muafaqah. He gave them acceptance. Hidayat to Irshad, Habat is the opposite. And that is where Hidayat to Irshad is where a person is showing you the way. So, for example, when you give out Dawah literature, you share the message of Islam, you teach people something, you remind your brothers and sisters to remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to fear Allah azza wa jal, to do a good deed. All that is hidayah to irshad. You are a source of guidance. You're pointing them in the direction. You're pointing them in the direction. And the result is hidayah to hidayah to uh, tawfiq. The result is the accepted guidance and that's from Allah. So meaning you can show someone the path but they're the, whether they accept it or not that's from Allah. Because they may not accept it no matter how much material you could spend millions of dollars for example on a campaign to do dawah and maybe dawah to one person. You spend millions of dollars on them. You give them you take them uh, to the, the holy lands and they 
they see every kind of good and people treat them with the kindest of, and, and, of respect and everyone is just showing them beautiful uh, manners and akhlaq and adab and, and telling them about Islam. But that may not, they may not accept it. No matter how much wealth you spent, no matter how much you did to achieve that aim. But the fact that they do accept, that is the hidayat tawfiq. That means they accepted that guidance. We ask Allah Azza wa Jal, the Almighty, to bless us with good, forgive us of our evil, bless us to be sources of guidance, and bless us to be guided. Allah wa sallam ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam.